All right, we're going to get into this board meeting now after uh, watching those great testimonies, those really highly intellectual, highly ethical, high-vibe type presentations. I mean, every one of those presenters at the board was just fantastic and made fantastic arguments. And we already know that the board sock puppets is sock puppets. They're, you know, you're talking to the wall. This is this is government. Trimen is government. And government is a fraud. Government's a scam. Trimen is a tax farm. The taxes are collected from the citizens, whether they like it or not. They're handed to McFarland. McFarland decides who gets the money and why and how. Uh, the sock puppets rubber stamp whatever he wants. And the citizens have no role in any of this. We have no role in how the tax farms spend their money. The governments and trimets spend an inordinate, inordinate amount of time trying to convince you that they care about us because that scam only can keep going as long as citizens are fooled by this. But you can look on any level of government and you'll see the scam is on all levels from Trump to Brown to trimet. The same exact scams. They say whatever they want you to, to hear. They acknowledge no dissenting point of views, and then they do what they want, regardless of what the citizens think. And there were studies on this, and it was something like 95% of all decisions are made benefit the people with money, and 5% benefit the actual citizens. We have no role in government. People need to wake up to this fact. The two-party system is a failed system. You, you get no representation from the two-party system. Both parties are owned by the corporatocracy. The corporatocracy is owned by the oligarchy, and they, they hold all the cards. People like McFarland march to the tune of the, of the corporatocracy, who march to the tune of the oligarchy. So you saw that play out with the TriMet police state and their support for police state tactics. So now we're going to watch part one. I'm sure this is going to be painful. All right, I'm going to close the uh, public forum. Um, you know, we are going to be taking action on, on the budget and other items today, and I don't know whether you're going to be, be remaining around to, to hear those actions. Um, I thought it important because I, I, I want to make clear, especially for you folks who are here, and I thank you all for coming, uh, and we did listen and, and we do hear you and uh, understand your positions. You understand who Warner is. Warner was a career technocrat. He has a ten thousand dollar a month pension. I believe it's from uh, uh, Beaverden. He spent his whole life as a technocrat. He was appointed specifically by Kitts Harper, who turned out to be a crook, and we all knew he was a crook. I mean, we all know who he was. But Kitts Harper picked Warner to take over the board. I mean, Warner walked into the board of directors and became its chairman. From he had no experience on the board. But they picked him because he knows how to talk the talk. See, listen to him. We heard you. We believe you. We can. He talks the talk. He's a lying piece of shit, like a politician is. He's gonna, he's gonna say we heard you. We respect you. He's gonna say all the right things. It means nothing. Never listen to the talk. You have to watch the walk. And that you feel about this very passionately. I think this board's. Uh, positions and actions have been really entirely consistent over the last few years with what you folks are looking for. And I just want to remind It's just painful. It's just painful. See, they're, they're all going to go into their talk about how great they are and they support you. and They believe in what you think and we're trying to be good and Oh, it's just pain. This is painful to watch. I, I don't know if I can watch Trimet Board. I mean, I stopped watching them for a few years, and I started recently watching them. I couldn't listen to the hypocrisy. I mean, they're such hypocrites, man. How can you even? It's like watching Donald Trump. You know, you're you know you're watching a, a lot. Okay, what's the point of listening to him? He he doesn't know what he's talking about, and he lies. It's the same thing here. You know, you're listening to people that are lying to your face. Mind you, when I talk about things, let me let this the moment. We we gave we gave you the opportunity. I should have let the uh, clip roll a little bit longer before that first edit because the crowd laughed when he said that. I'm glad I'm glad that they saw the same hypocrisy that I did. To listen to you, what, let, let let me just tell you what what I believe we've done in the last four or five years related to fair enforcement fines and violations, the low-income fares, and increasing transit service.
because they are all entirely consistent with what you've been saying. On the issue of disparate fair enforcement and, and exclusions, I want to make it clear, if you're not aware, this board actually directed staff to work with Portland State to come up with a study that to examine if there were disparate uh, you know, actions being taken in fair enforcement. And while the study said overall there wasn't disparate impacts, you're right, it did definitely show that uh, African Americans uh, were excluded from the system on a more regular basis and in mo and more numbers than the majority or other minorities. And we took that very seriously and we, we actually worked with uh, the district attorneys and with staff uh, that we said, you know, it is not right that we have uh, people who ha get a criminal record as a result of a two dollar and fifty cent fare uh, issue, and and okay, okay, let's not be completely negative. Okay, you're making a point that make does have to give them some credit for it. Okay, they did the pro pay for the study. If you didn't see the TriMet news release. He, the TriMet news release said TriMet does not discriminate. They did made no mention about the uh, exclusions. Tr the TriMet press release to the public said everything is fine. We don't discriminate. Later on, somebody else came out with the fact that they actually do discriminate when it came to exclusions. So it wasn't publicly known from TriMet. Uh, now they have also said that they're no longer going to uh, make what was it? Um, impeding public transit, a criminal offense or something. I'm not sure what's how that's translated to real life. All we know is we we watch these these police actions. That's what we see is these police actions, and they're horrendous. They're horrendous police actions that you're doing to people for a two dollar and fifty cent fare. All right. So all of his talk, I don't know anything about it. We only know out here what we see, and what we see is armies of police besieging transit riders. We work very closely with the district attorneys to, again, decide we should no longer move forward in prosecuting those and, frankly, not clogging the, the courts. What's it called? TriMet Tuesday? Is that what it used to be? Where people would come to the courts. And we said there's got to be a better way of doing that. And we, we asked staff to come up with some ideas. And I think many of you are aware that we actually are proposing legislation to decriminalize uh, fair enforcement and trying to work on a way to deal with it administratively so that it does not become a blemish on somebody's uh, record uh, for criminal purposes. And we actually can, can work with folks in other ways to deal with the fair evasion that they've taken. Um, and I All right, I'll give Warner and the TriMet people some credit for talking about changing the system. The problem is the system hasn't been changed yet that I know of. You have to talk to somebody like Christopher Connor, who actually is involved with these type of cases to see whether they've actually changed anything. As far as I know, there's been no changes yet. Everything is just talk, talk, talk about changes in the future. I think some of you are down there in Salem now, and I want to I want to say I appreciate your help in, in dealing with that. I think the bill has, be, has been heard by one house and is going to be con heard by another house, probably the Senate later this week, and maybe we can we can declare victory on that one. Um, on the issue of low income fares, I, I can't say enough that you know this board, especially the person sitting to my left and and, and your right for me has really talked a lot about uh, access to public transportation being a true road to prosperity and something that's really needed. And we believe that and, and we put together with Metro a task force on low income fares and what we ought to be doing from low income fares. I think they met, we met for about three months I believe and came up with some recommendations for a program that was, that, that would work. Uh, and. Jared, you're right, it's all about priorities and issues, whether we want to have tracks in good condition, keep the trains running, or we want to do some other things. We said we really can't afford that without some new, new increase in resources. And I think together we've been working with the legislature to enact some new resources at the state level that I think have a good chance of being passed this session that will allow us to fund the low income uh, fare program for this region. And I think that will be a great uh, uh, attribute for many, many people 
who uh, who uh, can't afford, frankly, to, to pay for public transportation. Um, take a look at my blog. You can go look at the, the TriMet board pork, uh, TriMet cash machine pork at this last board meeting. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars are being given away to the capital projects cronies. So his, his talk is in genuine... And it's only because he's talking that way because he's accepting the status quo. We can't change anything we have. We need something new. We need new money because we don't want to change our current cronyism policies. So his, his argument is moot because he's, he's not thinking. He's thinking inside the box, not outside the box. You know, and I, I guess the other thing I need to say here is safety is probably the number one concern of this board with our transit system. I came on board I, I came came on board five years ago when there was a lot of discussion about TriMet system being unsafe. This board did increase uh, transit police and did increase uh, enforcement. Again, he's being hypocritical. They increase the transit police, but the transit police don't ride the system. The transit police presence is only there for checking fares. Where the you don't see the transit police riding the system. You don't see the transit police stationed at the Lloyd Center for three or four hours at a time. You don't see the transit police anywhere patrolling the system. You only see them responding to calls and checking fares. So yeah, you increase the transit police, but who the hell knows what the fuck they're doing because they're not, they're not on the system. And the numbers show that we have been successful in terms of the uh, system being safer, in terms of aggravated uh, assaults, thefts, and other things. So whether, whether you like it or not... That's more bullshit. Crime is down everywhere. <laughs> they have all, half the population in jail. You know, the crime is, is theoretically down everywhere. Portland crime is down, supposedly. I listen to the scanner. There's tremendous shit going out on out there. Maybe it's not a bona fide crime, but it sure is criminal. I mean, there's fights and ruckus and threats and harassment. I mean, for him to say things are good out there, he's just a liar, man. Okay, he's lying. You know, they've, they've docked it up their statistics. Oh, look, crime is down 50%. Yeah, right, sure. What did they do, change their classification? Uh, I'm just letting you know that the system... So, so I... I will not argue with you that the killing of somebody is is is, is unconscionable and so sad. So 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 I don't know him, so I'm sorry. Um, so so the bottom line is what I'm telling you is we are uh, all right. Uh, that's Joe Walsh. God love Joe Walsh, man. I, I watched him at city council meetings. He's he's completely fearless. It's all right. So all I wanted to say on that is we do believe in safety for our drivers, for our riders, and for the public. And we are going to do what we need to do to ensure that safety. That doesn't mean we cannot be smarter in terms of the way we do it. And I think a number of the suggestions you have you made today are things that we ought to pursue further. In terms of participatory budgeting, um, we did do a lot of participation on our budget. And this obviously today shows that people are aware of the budget and are here. But, oh my God, it's just painful. Yeah, we did a lot of participation on the but what? Oh God, I mean, there's nobody, there's no input on the budget, okay? None. It's not designed by TriMet and his little hand-picked six-figure staff of cronies. There's no public interest. It's just bullshit. But that does not mean that we can't do that better either. So I think your suggestions about how we can do it better will be taken seriously, and I think uh, maybe that's something we can talk about, Mr. General Manager, in the upcoming budget processes. So I just wanted to make it clear, again, I believe overall our objectives are the same. Um, and I hope that you will continue to work with us to improve the system out there because our desire is to have a system that is accessible to all and is safe for all and, and affordable for all. So again, I probably said more than I need to. Any of the other board members wish to say anything?
this morning, so I just move on to the regular agenda. Okay, I'm going to move on to the regular agenda then.